Hey, James here. So today what I want to do is take a look at how we can take an existing iOS or Android library and convert it to the new SDK style tooling, which really simplifies the project structure. It also enables packaging up the NuGet without any new spec. You just do it right in the CS project. And also what's great here is you can easily move that project to multi-targeting, which I've talked about with plugins for Xamarin. Uh, and additionally, what's really great here is that it enables continuous integration and delivery with Visual Studio Team Services in just a few simple tasks, uh, which I've blogged about on Montemagno.com. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to jump over here into Visual Studio 2017 and just create a new class library. So it's just an iOS class library. I don't have anything really special inside of here at all um, for my class. There's class one. You can write some you know, iOS code inside of there. What I'm going to do is simply unload this project and hit edit. Now we'll go ahead and make this pretty big so everyone can see it. There's a whole bunch of gobbly gook inside of here. This is telling me that, hey, there's an uh, assembly info a class one and an import target in here. What we want to do is actually just delete all that, just delete all of it. And what we're going to do is come in and convert this into an existing SDK uh, style. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, say property group and then slash project. There we go. All right. So I'm also going to say Xamarin iOS 10. That's the name of the framework that I want to have in here. Now notice I just did target framework and that was it inside of here. Uh, and it's just a single framework. So that could be mono uh, or, or mono Android or that could be UWP or any other types of projects. Now we want to also do one more thing inside of here. We're going to go ahead and create another uh, item group. And you can see it's kind of upset right now because I'm just editing the CS proj automatically. And for anything inside this item group, you can also put different specifiers on it. We're going to add this package reference to uh, MS build SDK extras. And also we're going to import something at the end. So we're going to do that. Cool. And did I do, I didn't do this correct. Property group. Oh, that's why it's mad at me. All right, cool. Awesome. So that's almost all that I need uh, for this project. And we'll come back and edit this a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and reload it and say, yeah, go ahead and reload it for me. And uh, now what we're going to see is that a bunch of things have occurred. Uh, up in the uh, top right here, we have assemblies, um, Xamarin iOS, and NuGet, which is the SDK style extras. And I still have my class one, and I have this assembly info. Now this has gone ahead and picked up any of the files for me automatically inside the project. So that's why we're seeing this structure here. Uh, and we actually don't want that to occur. Or for me, I don't like when that stuff occurs. So I like to go ahead and remove some of this um, stuff and come in and now right click and say edit. So the new SDK style, I don't have to unload, I can just say edit. Now see, it's automatically added a bunch of item groups and things in here for me. Uh, I don't like that. I'm just not a fan of those specific item groups um, just going in. Uh, I like to turn on my own um, um, like references as, as essentially by themselves. So I can say, hey, only include the stuff that I am telling you about inside of my project. Uh, so how we do this is add a few more attributes into, the, uh, into this thing. So what I like to do, I'm gonna go and find my, um, um, what we need to do here is I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, for this project, I'm going to say enable default compile items to false. So uh, that is going to uh, basically tell it not to do anything. And I'm also going to delete this, get out of here, hit save. And what I can do at this point is inside my item group is I can tell it to uh, compile things that I want it to compile. So here I'm going to say, hey, only compile things that end in .cs, for instance. Now, we'll notice here that this is actually kind of bad because it's there's a bunch of CS stuff that's been added for me automatically, and that's no good. Uh, so there's a few ways to get around this. Uh, what you can do is 
come in and add a none. So this is usually pretty good and say, hey, don't, don't include any of this stuff. So any XML or AXML or PNGs or anything in the OBJ file, um, just don't include any of that stuff for me and then it won't be compiled. Um, and you, you can also go and say exclude uh, OBJ and exclude bin, that would be how it would be good. And then it just won't include any of those things in the, in the compilations uh, automatically. Now for me, that kind of gets a little bit not great uh, just because we still see some information and things in there and I don't really know exactly what's being compiled. So usually I kind of do this thing where I say class one dot iOS or dot Android or dot other things. And then what I can do is I can say dot iOS. So hey, only include things that are iOS. And then we'll only be compiling up that specific bit. Now we get a little bit more granular inside of our SDK style project. Uh, if we want to, we could do things um, such as, as this. So I could say, hey, you know what? Um, I could have you know, a condition here and say, hey, only for here, uh, for iOS specifically compile this. Um, now this is good once we start introducing multi-targeting. So we don't really need to do it for this, but it's kind of cool in general that you can. Uh, what else can we do? We can come in and now see how the, the bin and stuff's all gone once I did this stuff. So it's not going to be compiling or trying to bring any of that other stuff. That's why I really like it. Uh, there's a few other things that we can turn on. I'm going to add a few property groups here. Uh, so we can specify property groups for debug and release. So here's debug. This is going to say debug full, don't generate documentation, just be quick with it. Um, and then you know, generate package on build is true, debug symbols PDB only, and then generate documentation file automatically for me, which is pretty nice. Now, I like to get a little bit more granular uh, inside of this uh, application that I'm, that I'm doing. So um, what I usually like to do is you know, specify some other things for this uh, application. So I'll say, you know, use C Sharp 7.1 for instance pretty cool. You just go ahead and add that in there. Uh, we can also add uh, a little bit of information for our uh, constants. So here I'm going to also define constants. Now this defined constants is going to take into consideration this SDK extras. So when I come into this project, I could do things such as if iOS, for instance, and if, and it'll know based on if it's on iOS or not to use specific um, iOS or Android things. And again, that's good for multi-targeting. So I just like to keep that in there. Uh, then I'm going to go ahead and simply add um, some information uh, about this application. So I'm going to say, all right, so my assembly name is going to be james.myios or my library. Terrible. Don't, don't, do, don't do that. And then also give it a root namespace here. So just kind of setting some defaults, which are good. Um, and I'll also then set some information uh, just about the package itself. So what we're going to do here is go ahead and give it a package ID. So now we're getting into like NuGet category. And again, we'll say James.mypackage. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give it some package information. So there we go. Let's say product, assembly name, target version. So it just has some information. Versions of 1.0 for everything. I'm also going to then give it some information such as a neutral language. Um, and again, lang version, not, not default, but 7.1. Uh, what else can I do? So uh, here I'm going to go ahead and say, let me just go ahead and dump a bunch of other NuGet information. So this is in some of my project uh, templates that I have, which is just, hey, I just copy and paste this so I can say, you know, my awesome library, fill in some detailed information here. So I'm just going to go and put it in here. All right. So now what I can do is I can flip this over into release mode and uh, hit compile. And I'm going to go and open that up here and see what we get. So over here, I still get bin, object, get my iOS project, everything like that. When I go into bin, I get still get my bin and release. But look, I still have a Xamarin and iOS 10. So now I have a PDB, an XML file, a DLL for me. Uh, I also have this 
NuGet package. Now from the Windows Store or Microsoft Store, I've installed the NuGet package explorer. So it's really nice here is I can see specifically everything that'll be included into the actual um, NuGet that'll be shipped up to, to NuGet.org. So all my information, my tags, my copyright information, I can see that only a Xamarin iOS application is built. That's it. So that's, that's really nice. Everything is here, assembly style references, all that jazz. Now where it gets a little bit crazy is if I wanted to do some additional framework. So maybe all of a sudden I want uh, mono Android 8.0 inside of here. So instead of target framework, I'll say target frameworks. Okay. And it's going to go ahead and reload everything for me. Now remember where I, I said previous that I would need that maybe that Android or that iOS thing? Well, I can, I can actually come in and, and do something like this and say, hey, uh, let's do stuff called shared. So everything here in the item group occurs. Uh, this one, I'm only gonna say Android for Android and iOS for iOS. So I can now copy this class one and we'll call this class one.android.cs. Pretty cool. And uh, if I go and open that, what I love is that I can come in to my CS proj and um, go ahead and make sure that we remove any of these item groups. I get it. Sometimes it adds a bunch of stuff in there for me. So we want that. Now what's interesting is I have two class ones inside this project and you would think, oh, you're defining two classes. But um, what's great is that I don't because now it's compiled and I see mono Android 8. If I go to class 1.iOS, I see Xamarin iOS 10, for instance. If I go to my dependencies, I have two different ones in here. So I have the assemblies for Android, assemblies for iOS inside of here, and I'm multi-targeting this, which means if I come back into my release, which I've gone and recompiled and open up the NuGet package explorer, we can see now I have two different folders, a DLL and another DLL, but only being installed in Android iOS, I can add more things like net standard, which is the interface, the abstraction over it. It makes it really, really nice to go ahead and start implementing with the new SDK style and everything is controlled right here. Anyways, that's my overview of converting an existing one over. It's super simple. Uh, you can come in, you can add uh, NuGet package references. So if you wanted uh, json.net here, this is you know your package reference, give it the name version and that's it. Hope you enjoyed until next time. Um, Check out my blog at uh, montemagno.com and follow me on Twitter at James Montemagno. And don't forget to subscribe to a whole bunch of good Xamarin and .NET stuff uh, on my YouTube channel.